In today's Rocket League tutorial, I will be giving you the complete guide to controls. Your control setup is really the foundation for everything you do in Rocket League. I want to look at five different advanced mechanics and why the default controls simply aren't sufficient for most players who want to improve in these areas. Switching your controls is really weird at first. For about a week, you'll feel like a complete noob, like this is your first time playing the game. But trust me, just quit playing ranked for a few days and soon enough you'll be back to your amazing self. And in a few hundred hours, you'll definitely be thanking me. On virtually every high aerial shot, the fastest and most efficient way to get your car off the ground and heading quickly towards the ball is by doing what is called a fast aerial. This is accomplished by hitting jump and boost at the same time, and then pressing jump again while continuing to hold boost. There are plenty of videos out there on how to do the fast aerial, so check them out. This is actually really difficult to do with default controls. So, I recommend switching boost to R1. You'll now have to rest your middle finger over R2 and your index finger over R1. Again, this will feel weird at first. But just do it. Try it, but try it for more than 5 minutes. Play a few games with it. You need to be able to do the fast aerial and you can't afford to be feels backflipping on half your aerials. You need to be able to drift and boost at the same time. Why do you need to be able to drift and boost at the same time? The quickest way to turn your car around is by drifting and boosting, simultaneously. Some of the best kickoff strategies include drifting and boosting simultaneously, and advanced recovery methods often include drifting and boosting at the same time. So I recommend switching drift from square, or X, to L1. So now you'll have your left middle finger on reverse, and your index finger on L1, which is now Drift. Hopefully you can see what's happened here in the last two switches. You've just taken two of your fingers that you previously never used, that is your middle fingers, and you've given them jobs. So now one finger is having to do less work, and you're able to do the mechanics quicker and easier. You just have to get used to using those fingers. That's what she said! <laughs> If your car lands on the ground sideways, it will stop immediately. There are times where you cannot get your car facing the direction you want to go, like when someone bumps you, and stopping on the ground just kills your momentum. Holding the drift button before and during your landing will keep your car's momentum, and you can then recover by either half flipping or turning. As I've said before, boosting and drifting simultaneously is important, and this is no different. I recommend switching air roll to L1, for multiple reasons. But the main reason I did this was because I found myself wanting to switch to car cam on certain aerials, and I would have to stop air rolling and boosting to do this. So I'd kind of float aimlessly for a half a second while I switched to car cam, and then I'd start boosting and air rolling as needed again. You want to be able to do all of these things simultaneously. The last mechanic I want to discuss is half flipping. I have a video coming out soon that will cover everything related to half flipping, so be on the lookout for that. For now I'll say this. The best way to do a straight half flip is not by using the air roll button and turning your car over that way, but by binding the key air roll right or air roll left to an accessible button on your controller. So I've made air roll right X on my controller. So the input for me to half flip is a canceled backflip like usual, and then just X, no other buttons. And my half flips are so much quicker and easier this way. So, to recap, here are my controls currently. If you find this kind of video helpful, like and subscribe. If not, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.